thing on? Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Mouse, and today I'll be talking about classroom management, creating a safe, healthy, and happy classroom. Okay. These are the students of the classroom. Introduce yourselves, please. My name's Miss Meow Meow. I'm Hoot the Owl. I'm Rufus. And I'm Peggy the Piggy. Okay. So, first of all, what is classroom management? Classroom management refers to those activities of classroom teachers that create positive classroom environment with effective teaching and learning can occur. Hey, good teaching takes time and understanding. Never yell at students. Treat them with respect. The golden rule. Class, what's the golden rule? Do, do unto, unto others, others as you would have them do unto you. you. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so avoid raising your voice. You can use methods to get their attention, like chimes or hand clapping. procedures. So number one, come in and greet the teacher by giving her a hug, a handshake, or a high five. This, this lets them know that the teacher values them and is glad to see them. Excellent. 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 It's good to see you all. Okay, number two, sign up for lunch and take attendance. Students can put their name tags in the lunch or no lunch folder. Why no lunch? Oh, that's if you don't, if you bring your lunch, you don't want to have to buy the lunch at school. So you put your name in the no lunch folder. And then, number three, unpack belongings and make sure pencils are sharpened. Number four, do morning work. This can be an activity to review a concept from the class before. If the students don't always follow the proper procedure, you can ask them to go outside and come back in and do it again. When the children know what is expected of them, they will know how to succeed. There are seven deadly habits teachers use to control behaviors of their students. They are criticizing, blaming, complaining, nagging, threatening, punishing, and rewarding. Teachers should replace these deadly habits with seven connecting habits. Caring, listening, supporting, contributing, encouraging, trusting, and befriending. The goal should be to connect with your students, not control them. Create a sense of connectedness among you and your students. One way to do this is to involve your students in decisions about how to rearrange the desks and tables. Okay. Organization. Reflective teachers hang posters, decorate bulletin boards, and carefully consider ways to arrange furniture to fit their curriculum plans and the needs of their students. Arrangement of desks. A study disclosed that less effective teachers did not actively monitor their students' behavior. Instead, they busied themselves with clerical tasks or worked up with a single student on the task while ignoring the rest of the class. You can conclude that if you expect your students to obey the rules of your classroom, you must give them clear directions, allow them to rehearse the procedures until they got them right, and actively monitor your students at work, showing them that you expect them to pay attention to the task and do their work. Next, teacher body language. Strong, effective teachers are able to communicate many important things with eye contact, physical proximity, bodily carriage, gestures, and facial expressions. Also, straight posture reinforces the student's perception that the teacher is an authority worthy of their respect. Okay, next, establishing rules and consequences. There are two types of consequences used to guide or shape students' behavior. Natural consequences are those that follow directly from students' behavior or action. Logical consequences are those that the teacher selects to fit students' actions. They are intended to cause students to change their behaviors. 
The difference between a punishment and a consequence is that a consequence is not arbitrary and is not dispensed with anger or any other strong emotion. And Miss Meowmeow, would you like to list the examples of class rules? Sure. Rule. We wait in line courteously. Consequence. If we do not follow this rule, we will go to the end of the line. Rule. We listen to the teacher. Consequence. If we do not follow this rule, we will lose five minutes of free time. Rule. We turn and work on time. Consequence, if we do not follow this rule, we will do our work at free time. Rule, we work and talk quietly. Consequence, if we do not follow this rule, we will take a time out. Rule, we treat others with respect. Consequence, if we do not follow this rule, we will write a letter of apology. Excellent, Miss Meow Meow. Okay. There's also two-way communication with parents. Discipline problems are less likely when teachers communicate with their expectations to students and parents so that everyone is working with the same set of expectations. That is why I communicate with your parents and guardians regularly, class. Okay. Next, issues in management. School violence, bullying, and suicide make the headlines these days, even in elementary school. It's good to teach children how to ignore routine teasing. You're a dodo bird. It's not nice to call each other names. Hoot, just ignore Rufus. And Rufus, please apologize to Hoot. Rufus? I'm sorry, Hoot. Oh, it's okay. Aw, uh, how sweet. Next, discipline techniques. Number one, step one, reminder. And here's an example. There's the bell, class. You should all have your homework out on your desk now. And that's a reminder, letting the students know that they should have their homework on the desk when they hear the bell. Step two, warning. Boy, this stuff really sucks. Rufus, I will not tolerate your outburst. I expect you to raise your hand and wait to be called on before you speak. This is your warning. Now, can you tell me the next step? Um, an infraction slip? Yes. Step three, an infraction slip. The student is approached again. He is reminded that he has a warning. An infraction slip will be turned into the office. Step four, send to the office. The student is then sent to the office. Next, we have assertive discipline. Assertive teachers react confidently and quickly in situations that require the management of student behavior. They are supported by a few clearly stated classroom rules that have been explained, practiced, and enforced consistently. They give firm, clear, concise directions to students who are in need of outside guidance to help them behave appropriately. And next we have sponge activities. For teachers, no matter how well you plan out the day, there are going to be times in the day when you have to quickly and creatively fill up a five to ten minute gap in the schedule. That's where sponge activities come into play. Sponge activities soak up these in-between minutes with easy to implement challenges that motivate students to stretch their minds in new directions. Most of the activities can be done independently in teams or as a class depending on your needs. As the year continues, you'll develop many sponge activities of your own based on the lessons you are teaching. Until then, these ideas will keep students involved in learning when there are unexpected minutes to fill. And Ms. Meow Meow, would you like to read some examples of the sponge activities we do in our class? Sure. When a teacher says a number, like a day of the week or a month, we can tell what day comes next or what day comes before.
We can also name, draw, or list kinds of foods, dinosaurs, plants, holidays, or cars. We can also list colors that we're wearing. We can list objects in the room that are in the shape of a square, a circle, or a triangle. We can also use as many words as possible to describe the weather today, our friends, our teacher, or our homes. Excellent, Miss Meow Meow. Excellent reading skills. Okay, next I'm going to talk about positive discipline. There are five criteria for positive discipline. Number one, helps children feel a sense of connection, belonging, and significance. Number two, is mutually respectful and encouraging, kind and firm at the same time. Number three, is effective long term, considers what the child is thinking, feeling, learning, and deciding about himself and his world, and what to do in the future to survive or to thrive. Number four, teaches important social and life skills, respect, concern for others, problem solving, and cooperation as well as the skills to contribute to the home, school, or larger community. Invites children to discover how capable they are. Encourages the constructive use of personal power and autonomy. Teacher Effectiveness Training, TET. Teacher Effectiveness Training was founded by Dr. Thomas Gordon, who was a renowned psychologist and a pioneer in teaching communication skills and conflict resolution methods to parents, teachers, youth, organization managers, and employees. Teachers have three types of relationships with their students. Teaching learning time, when teacher and students are on task, attentive and participating. Student-owned problem time, when students experience upsets or problems that distract their attention from learning tasks. And teacher-owned problem time, when the teacher experiences problems with with unacceptable student behavior and is distracted from teaching tasks. In TET, teachers learn specific skills of interpersonal communication and problem solving that they use more effectively um, to, to more effectively assist students with problems and to help get changes in unacceptable student behavior. Next is culturally responsive discipline. Culturally responsive classrooms management is an approach to running classrooms with children in all culturally responsive way. ways. It is a natural extension of culturally responsive teaching, which uses children's backgrounds, rendering of social experiences, prior knowledge, and learning styles in daily lessons. Like for example, who you're from India, so we could use your background to teach a lesson about India. Would you like that, Hoot? I would. <laughs> Very good. So we can get a whole lesson out of that, and, it, and you would be included in the lesson. Okay. Next, why is the consideration important, and what is good about it? The consideration is important because without classroom management, there would be a lot of chaos. Students would be distracted, would not be able to learn in that kind of environment. Everyone would run around the room. The teacher would end up yelling at the students, which would affect them negatively. As a teacher, you should want to create a safe, healthy, and happy classroom. It's good to be able to have rules and procedures that are carried out. What is something that you need to think about and consider prior to utilizing? You really need to consider the students in the classroom. You should accommodate their needs in the classroom. If a student can't sit still, you can allow that student to stand up to do his or her work. How does this apply to curriculum and assessment? The curriculum and assessment can be based on how the desks are arranged. This can allow space for activities for the kinesthetic learners in the classroom. The desks can also be arranged in groups or tables so that the students can work together. The students can be placed in cooperative learning groups to think, care, share, or use individual whiteboards to assess. If there is classroom management, the students will get more out of the lesson.
Thus can be arranged in rows, circles, semicircles, and small groups. Each arrangement influences how students work and how they perceive their environment. Rows of desks provide an advantage in keeping order but leave little space for activities. A large circle of desks can be used if the teacher envisions that teaching and learning experiences will take place in the center of the circle, but it will be difficult for all students to see the chalkboard. Arranging desks into small groups results in students spending more time working together. And these are the arrangements of desks in rows, circles, groups, and semicircles.